grateful to be your children. Mm. You're such a good dad. Mm. Jesus, you're such a good Lord. You're such a good Savior. You're such a good King. You're such a good Master. You're such a good Teacher. You're such a good friend. Yeah. Thank you for the glorious riches of what you have done for us because of your love for us. Help us to um, to reveal another layer that tonight. Holy Spirit, come and teach us. Um, sit in our hearts with us and and speak things that you've been wanting to speak to us um, so that we would taste and know your goodness in new ways, that we would live off of your life with new energies and new frequencies, that we would, um, we would know your goodness here, yeah. now, before, before the after. And we want to know your goodness to increasing and increasing and increasing depths and heights and breadths. Every dimension of your goodness that we can handle, we want it. Yeah. And we know there's more than we can ask or imagine. Um, <laughs> but help us to imagine more, Lord. Expand our imagination, expand our hearts, expand our capacities to receive your goodness and, and the simplicity of what you accomplished on the cross. <clears throat> we love you, we trust you, and uh, where we don't love and trust you very well yet, help us. Um, help us out of our unbelief. Yeah. Um, thank you for overcoming the world of unbelief with yours, with your faith. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, so, you got, uh, you guys remember, uh, and it's been a while for me, I was, I was, uh, I was enjoying some uh, coronavirus in the last uh, week. <laughs> so, sorry for the, uh, the uh, absence. I was not expecting to receive that piece of crap sickness into my body, but, uh, you know, hey, you, you win some and lose some. Good thing uh, I'm not the savior of the world. Huh? <laughs> um, but I still don't believe in sickness. Amen. You Amen. know, I, I was attacked and it sucked. Um, it was just like a bad flu, you know. And then I can smell and taste stuff. So, um, thanks, are Mark, for bringing now? over the reinforcements. What's that? Are you all better now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all better. Uh, I don't quite have my smell and taste back yet fully, but. I can smell when my children pass gas, <laughs> <laughs> or other adults. <laughs> um, I don't do that. Yeah. Anyways. All right. So, yeah, August fourteenth. Nora's forty. Um, I'm forty. You guys are young and beautiful. Um, we're a small, sweet church. It's it's going to be this small. It, you know, being small and intimate is really fun. Um, big churches have some awesome organization and teaching and stuff, but it's really hard to do the small stuff. Um, and it's something that I really miss out on. And so uh, don't take it for granted. It's, it's really sweet to get to know each other and go deep because that's what the kingdom life is about. It's about knowing each other and being known. Um, that's the best thing about our God is he wants to know you. Amen. You know? He wants to know you, and he wants you to know him. Yeah. And so, um, everything he did is for that purpose. He, he wants to know you, and he wants you to know him. Because in that knowing, um, the world changes. You know, transformation comes, and light light invades darkness. Um, darkness doesn't want to be known. Um, it wants to hide and keep its own way and do its own thing and um, guard its own program. Yeah. <clears throat> But light, light is is an amazing thing, and we're made for it. You know, you're born children of light, um, and uh, it's it's amazing to be of the light. It's you know, there's a mystery with it. it it's any any places in our hearts that hide in darkness, 
it's hard to bring it to the light because of fear. Yeah. You know, fear is there and it has a, it has like a voice. We've given it permission at some point in our lives, um, whether it's a lie our parents told us or a lie we picked up along the way, and, and we start to believe it, and then we we hold this area in darkness, and we're we're in bondage to it, you know. And whenever it gets approached by the light, we we shy back, you know. We we step away from the light because it's scary. You know, the, the threat of something being uncovered that you're not ready mm -hmm. to have uncovered yet is, yeah. it can be really terrifying. Um, but what's amazing is that when you finally take the courage that is being given to you as a gift, you don't have to make up courage, like it's given to you, like God gives you courage. Um, all of a sudden, like the darkness becomes light in an instant. Yeah. And, and what you thought was so horrible is like nothing at all mm -hmm. and it, it just gets swallowed up in the light you know what I mean and it's it's such a it's such a mysterious thing and that that process of darkness becoming light is such a beautiful thing that I, I think Paul in his geekiness his godly geekiness would probably say something like you know in the same way I boast in my weakness I boast in my darkness you know I'm excited to find darkness in my life so I can bring the light to it so I could reveal so Christ can reveal these places and who I actually am and who he is in the darkness, you know? Um, there, there's just, there's something really glorious about the darkness invading, or the, the light invading the darkness. Um, it's not just this good versus evil thing, you know? It's like, man, there's something glorious about light invading darkness. That's good. Um, so, so Jesus... He, I meant to bring my Bible, and I misplaced it on my way, um, but it's okay. I have, I've got my notes here, just, it's not as fun to not fill the paper. <laughs> um, 2 Corinthians 5.21, anybody remember that verse? No. Nope. I know, at least one of you. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5.21. <laughs> Is this a Bible believing church? Yeah. Oh. Believing. Have you no sin? Yes. Hey. Yes. Good job. Amen. We got one. We're not that bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> we are one body. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. in the mind. Yeah. We don't know Isn't that the story of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah? He's like, for 50 righteous men. Ten righteous men, one righteous man down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, what I want our short time tonight to be is an exercise in meditating on this, this truth, this one truth. And uh, Amy brought it out a couple weeks ago, and uh, it just took me way deeper than I've been before. And uh, when you go deeper into a truth with God, it's yours. Right. You know, you go deeper with him. Yeah, it's good. It's nobody else's, it's yours. Yeah. yeah. And so to the degree that you meditate on something with him, it will become a part of you. And it will, it, like the, the glory of that will become a part of who you are and the essence of God radiating in your, radiating in your life. That's good. Um, That's good. So let this become you. Let this um, just be established in you much more than you've ever had it established in your life. But the, uh, the verses, like James said, for he made him so the father made jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of god in him <clears throat> um this process of being made sin is what i want you guys to like meditate on together with me today um you know the process of Jesus going to the cross. The process of a righteous man coming to a point where he, uh, by his own will, by his own desire, by his own submissive obedience to the Father, becomes sin. He takes on the sins of, of the world, of the creation, past, present, future. Outside of time, coming in, and he's taking everything. You know? And how does this happen, right? This is, this is one of the biggest divine mysteries. Um, that will ever be taught and sought and 
be held, you know, like this, this thing right here. How did, how did Jesus, the, the word eternal, who came in flesh and lived a perfect life, how did he actually become sin? Um, and uh, when, you know, it's, it's to the degree that you know Jesus has become your sin um, is the degree that you will walk in freedom. Yeah. The degree that you identify with that truth that he actually became your sin. Yeah. And it's not like a, a one time thing. Like he became your sin, you know, all the way up to the moment you said a salvation prayer. You know? It's not just the stuff that happened up to that point. Right. You know? It's the stuff that happens after that. Especially the stuff that happens after that. <laughs> all the unbelief you walk in after the point of receiving Jesus, all that unbelief that is sin, right? Anything that's not of faith is sin. Same. sin. Yeah. That's a lot of sin. <laughs> I don't know how to get away from that one. You know? Every day. Uh -huh. Every night. I mean, what are we doing in our unconscious? You know? How much sin and unbelief are we packing away in these places that are not even like aware and alert in our hearts? You know? All around the world. What about what about the people that don't even know Jesus yet? Did he become sin for them? Right? Yeah. He became sin for the murder. He became sin for the, you know, you fill in the blank. Um, your most hated villain that you can think of. He became sin for that guy. Yeah. Um, so, the other day when Amy was talking, um, one very vivid memory came into my heart. And I want to share it with you guys to help you go into your own memories and let Jesus become sin for you. That's what I want you to like apprehend in your life. Um, this this uh, she, she was a friend of ours who did house church with us for a few years, <clears throat> and um, she was having a really hard time homeschooling her children, and. Um, it's a strange sound. It's like a laser. <laughs> yeah. Um, she she was really uh, she was at home with her kids a lot. Her husband was working, and um, one day she totally lost it on her son, who was a challenging boy. He was very high energy. He was um, just antsy, he was always moving, throwing things, breaking things, that kind of thing, you know, she's trying to teach him. Um, and uh, she she ended up strangling him for a few seconds. Um, I just lost it, you know. And she, she choked him hard enough to leave a bruise on his neck. And um, she ended up telling Nora and I later, and uh, uh, her neighbor saw her son saw the bruise on her neck and called CPS on her. And um, she got the phone call and they said, hey, we're going to come visit your house. We're going to, we, you know, we've heard reports of child abuse and we want to come see how you're running things. So she she went in, into full panic mode, you know. And uh, actually, she's super condemned, you know, after this happened. Um, and uh, she called us in hysterics and her husband, too, and um, we started walking through this with them, you know. And she's pre preaching the gospel to him, you know. Um, and after a couple of days, um, the, the CPS people came and, you know, they looked at her son's neck and asked her a bunch of questions. And um, they, didn't, they never took the kids, right? Yeah. Um, but the, the wife, the wife, um, during a nap, had a vision. And in her vision, she saw she saw her son, and she saw the incident where she lost control of herself, and she choked him. And she was choking him, and all of a sudden, it wasn't her, it was Jesus choking her son. And she, like, fled out of her, her vision and, like, freaked out, didn't know what to do with that. And she, she told us, and she told me about it, um, and 
when she said that in my spirit, I was like, oh my God. Like, that's the gospel. And it was so offensive, right? <laughs> it was so offensive. Yeah. Because this is a, like an innocent child, innocent to a larger degree than yeah. adults. But she had more power, right? And she was misusing that. And she now has a vision of not her anymore, but Jesus choking her son. Um, and and I told her, I said, oh my God, I said like that, that's, that's Jesus becoming your sin. You know, that, that is, that is the depths of what it means for you that Jesus became your sin. I was like, and, and it, it, okay, Jesus obviously doesn't want to hurt your son. Right. But when he became your sin, this is what it means. When you choked your son, he actually took the all-encompassing reality of what your sin deserves. Mm -hmm. You know, like he took your place. This is what the gospel is. This is Jesus in your place doing the bad things you did, but it's not you anymore, it's Jesus. And he took that, and he took that place, and he became that. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I'm telling you, self-righteousness will reject that thought, mm -hmm. especially in, in each of your own lives where you deal with sin. Jesus wants to fully identify with your sin so that you can fully unidentify with it. Yes. So, good. so that you can instead fully identify with his righteousness. Yes. And this is a profound, simple practice that I, to be honest, I, that, that girl, she struggled a lot with pride and unbelief and stuff, but she was very visionary, very prophetic, and she would see, she would see things. And I don't think many people can receive this. I don't, I think this is a big part of why people don't understand this part of the gospel very well, because we, we paint him as some kind of other, like, He's so good, you know, Jesus is so good. He would never do anything bad, and he wouldn't, but he became sin. Yeah. Like, he became our sin. What does that mean in your life? You know, what, what is the stuff that you struggle with that you identify and then you secretly accuse yourself or you condemn yourself, you know? And it's, it's actually, the reason it's still an issue for you is because it's separated from him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you won't receive that he has become sin for you in those areas and you justify it away like it's oh I'm trying to protect Jesus yeah. he doesn't need your protection right. He, died. <laughs> right. he needs you to accept that he's become your sin Yeah. so that you can exchange it so that you can release it so that you can actually let him pay the penalty for that sin it's so powerful dude yeah. because he, when he takes that and you allow him to what does he do with it does he go hide does he go pretend like he didn't do these sins and, you know, and uh, run away from the Father? Or does he run to the Father with an open heart and say, here I am, a sin offering for the world, you know? Like, he, he, he becomes your sin, and then he, with all the courage and all the creation, he goes to the Father, and he becomes the Lamb, the sacrifice. It's so radical. It's so amazing. Yeah. And so to the, to the degree you will let Jesus become your sin, it's our, it's, it's, this, is, this is divine reality. Yeah. You know, this is the gospel, at least the first part of it. You, you accept that he's become your sin. He takes your sin, and your sin is divinely paid for. It is divinely punished perfectly, and it is divinely wiped away. That's why his blood cleanses your conscience. That's why it purifies your heart. It, yeah. This, this is very personal, you know. So, I that that's what I want to challenge you guys with is, yeah. But I would say for for most of us here, probably most of our sin stuff is stuff we don't really think about. You know, it's like kind of like over here, kind of feel it, we kind of recognize it, but we don't really like engage it. You know, 
Um, and in one degree, that's great. We don't want to be sin-conscious people because that we end up being super religious if we do that. But we do want to be aware of these areas that um, we have separated ourselves from God in, and we're still trying to manage yeah. darkness. Yeah, right. You know? um, let's not try to manage. Let's just like fully identify with Christ became my sin. Yeah. You know, like all, all it takes is humility. It takes like letting the, that guard down, letting the justifications go, letting the fear go, and and he comes in and he and it's 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 shocking. That, like like that visual and that story that it's shocking when he when you see him become your sin. Yeah. And it should be, mm-hmm. you know. But that's radical love, and that he he did that for each one of us with a crazy zeal and a crazy passion. And then he went with a true heart to the Father to get it dealt with once and for all. Um, but this is an ongoing daily thing for us. Um, this isn't a one-time thing. This is like every day, like learning to let this go and learning believe to, it. yeah, learning to believe it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, man, that it's, when I think about this, this side of it, I, I mean, it, and even then, there's so much more, right? The, the righteousness he gives us is so incredible, you know? The, the imputation of, now, like, what you can do in your mind on the other end of this is you can look at what Jesus did when he walked the earth, and you can see yourself as him doing that. You can see, oh, wow, I just woke up today, and like Chris Blackley likes to say, I've, I've already raised the dead, I've... You know, yeah. blind eyes have been opened. I've healed the sick. I've cast out 30 lepers. You know, like I, yeah. when it's imputed to you like that, your life is imputed. It's like, it's like you did those things. Amen. The reality of that becoming one with you in your heart is what changes you. Right. Um, but there's so much, there's so much more of that yeah. that comes but you have to, you have to start with the mercy, you know. Yes. You have to start with the letting your guard down and letting him become your sin. Um, you have to let it become personal. Yeah. Um, if you don't, it's just religious games, and we're just shooting ourselves in the foot, you know. Whatever degree we all resist it will be the degree of death we walk in. Yeah. Um, and the life that we live um, will reflect the things that we believe, you know? But if we contend to believe in the gospel, if we contend to believe Jesus became my sin, like, and we are struck, like, we press in like bulldogs, we will get life, Mm -hmm. you know? We will get cancellation after cancellation of death sentences as we identify with him becoming our sin, and then we will get measure after measure after measure of goodness because of his righteousness that is due each one of us. It's actually fair. Yeah. It's actually just that we would do this but it takes courage to believe. Um, so that is my short message. Wait, no, wait. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we, uh, you, you go ahead. Go okay. <laughs> um, when, okay, so when Bo was sharing the thing with the lady, uh, like my, in my mind's eye and in my, in my soul, right, I was like mad at her. I was like, mm-hmm. how, how could you do that? You know, like I have strong judgments towards child abuse, mm-hmm. right? How can you do that? And then as he's sharing the vision and talking about that Jesus did it, my heart shifted. Mm-hmm. And I, it was easy to be like, oh, well, I forgive Jesus. Because <laughs> I, I know Jesus' heart. And I know the context in which, like, what he was sharing and Jesus took on sin. And it, so taking this, this what Bo was talking about, and also not just for ourselves, but learning how to, oh, this is a, a huge key in learning how to free, walk in forgiveness towards others. Yeah. Um, in knowing Jesus' heart. And like it's like the scripture, what you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. Yeah. Um, because yeah. he took on the sin. So the people who've hurt us, the people who've offended us, the people that we would want to stay away from instead of seeing it as them, we're seeing it not separated from Christ, seeing everything actually in Christ. Yeah. No separation. Now it's the context with all this was about oneness. There's no separation, and so if Jesus did it to me, do I know His heart? Do I know? But you know, He did it, but He stood in the gap. 
and he took on their sin and he's forgiving them. So if he's forgiving them and he's the one who now is carrying that debt, do I forgive Jesus or am I going to hold that against him? But I know his heart and I love Jesus. So it's, it just shows that the, 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 to the magnitude we're in relationship with Jesus is the magnitude that we'll be in relationship with each other. Because if I am not receiving, right, is what most of, if I'm not receiving, I'm not giving either. We can't. Anyways, uh, Nora. That was exactly what I was going to say. Wait, for real? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think so, a different go for it. Do it. The worst for it after hearing yours. No. no I, I would if I okay. could. It was great. Because that's great. Because like, you bring other. Do we have communion? Yeah. Where is it? Thoughts, questions? Is God good? Yeah. Yeah. yeah man. I'm grateful for Jesus. Yeah. So good. Is that, uh, that freak anybody out? Yeah. Oh, I love it. It was well, not what I was expecting you were going with. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you that it's, 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 it's a freaky thought when you start letting Jesus become your sin. Well, ending there, that's where it's freaky. But then knowing the rest of it, that's where it's glorious. Yeah. Yeah, come on up. Uh, I said, stopping there at that point, like, if we, if that's all we knew, if someone outside of Christianity or knowing the end result would hear that, they'd be like, that is sick and perverted. I don't want to have anything to, anything to do with that God. But because we know the rest of it, because we know he took that sin and died for us, he made everything just yes. by his pure death. Yeah. That is, it becomes glorious then. And the more, like what you're saying, the more we're able to see that for ourselves and our sin, because it's kind of easier in one way if, it's, if you're not too harsh on yourself <laughs> uh, to see Jesus doing the things that they're small sins. You know? Right. Uh, but we need to start there because we'll, if we can't start to hear and receive Jesus doing the sin that we're doing and then what he paid for and then giving us righteousness, there's no way we can forgive anybody else. Yeah. yeah. There's no way. Yeah. But we see the darkness and see Jesus and what he did with that darkness. Mm -hmm. Then we can forgive and, and see and be hopeful for those for the people that we would not ever want to really, we wouldn't in the natural want them to be forgiven. Right. Uh, but Jesus does. Yeah. Come up. Let's do communion. This is what he took right before the garden, which is where it didn't that where he took on sin. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read uh while you guys are getting this. I'm going to read Luke 22. Jesus said in verse 35, Luke, Luke uh, 22, 35, When I sent you without money bags, knapsacks, and sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. So they were learning faith and depending on him, right? Verse 36, then he said to them, but now he who has a money bag, let him take it. Likewise, a knapsack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy a sword. That's so weird, right? That used to confuse the heck out of me. Because, um, you know, he was, telling, he was teaching them how to depend on him in the beginning. Um, and now he's, now he's saying, like, work for yourself now and get your own sword like this. Get ready to defend ourselves. And then he says, uh, verse 37, For I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And then he quotes Isaiah. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For these things must be fulfilled in me. He's, he's talking about I must become sin now. Yeah. So go get your sword, you know. Go, go, go uh, make for yourself. And then he goes, next scene is Jesus talking about, if this is your will, 
take this cup away from me. I realize not my will, but yours be done. And the whole mystery of exchange of Jesus sweating blood, being strengthened by an angel, and then being betrayed by Judas, you know, and going through the whole next day of what he does starting in the night. Um, man. Being in agony, he prayed, sweat became like great drops of blood falling into the ground. So that this this whole section is where he's becoming sin. Yeah, in the garden. Mm -hmm. His uh, the will mm -hmm. to want our not wanting to. Yep, exactly. Him. That's that explains the will. Do you want to explain on that, honey? Yeah. Um, I see like this in in the garden in the beginning, mankind had one will with God, the Father. They were they were one mind, one will. Right? You guys all agree with that? Mm -hmm. um, tempter comes in. Um, and to whatever degree we have understanding of this story, uh, big picture wise, that will was fractured and all of a sudden man's will became split from God's will. And there was no, no longer oneness of mind and oneness of will. There was a fallen man's will after that point, fractured the world, fractured creation. We're living in that right now. Jesus has come and restored that. He, he has restored that will. This is the, the scene of Jesus as man. All over the, the, the book of John, it says, I come to do my Father's will. Yeah. Jesus says, I only do what my Father says to do. I only say what my Father says to say. I only do what I see my Father doing. You know what I mean? He makes it super clear. Yeah. He's not doing anything else. He's just doing what the Father says to do. And then right here in the garden, he says, Father, if it's your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will that yours be done, as if there's two wills, as if Jesus' will is not the Father's will. Um, and what what I believe God revealed to me in this is Jesus is fully identifying and becoming sin, becoming man, be identifying with the fallen will of man, and he is literally sweating blood, bringing this rebellion back Unto submission under the Father and, and yeah. writing so the mind. Like that the mind it's like you guys ever seen Constantine? Anybody? Yeah. Yes. He's like he's trying to bring his arms together, you know, and they're like they're like almost like magnets, like uh, opposite polar. They're like trying to push away. Um, Jesus, like the, the will of man and, and God's will, he's like bringing him back uh, to oneness, you know what I mean? And he's sweating drops of blood as he does that. Um, and he he finally does. He he, he unifies the fallen will of man back to and reconciles the fallen will of man back to the Father's will. So amazing. <laughs> so there's now, there's now oneness. There, there's, yeah. there's soundness of mind for us. There, there's a will that Jesus entered into wow. that, that is like there's no striving for us now. Right. You don't have to strive to like come into the Father's will. Jesus did that as a fallen, broken man. So good. You know, he pulled that sin back into the Father, you know, and he fully came to him with all our sin. Like, he, he did not shy away. He didn't go hide his sin. He fully brought it, you know. Not my will, but yours be done. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, this is the whole mysterious um, play. So, and then he holds it. He holds all the way through the night and all the way through the accusations. He doesn't. He doesn't open his mouth once to defend himself, right? Yeah. He doesn't say, "I didn't do it." Yeah. He just. He just goes like a like a sh like a lamb, right? right to the the shear, right to the sh yeah to the slaughter. All right. Um, okay. So Jesus, um, this bread. This delicious sweet bread. <laughs> we take this together now um, with joy in our hearts, with gratitude, wells of gratitude. We're so grateful for your broken body. Thank you for breaking yourself for us, for becoming sin for us, or for allowing your lifeblood to pour out. The, the, the wine in this bread. Um, we declare it right now, Lord. This is this is true food 
from heaven that never perishes. Yeah. This is true drink from heaven that, that cleanses us. It unifies us. It yeah. unifies us. Yeah, we, we thank you that our fallen wills have been reconciled. Yeah. Back with you, Dad. The, the true will of God is our will. Our will is in line with your will. As we take this bread, as we drink this wine that is on this bread dipped, we receive the, the finished work of you, Jesus, the finished work of what the blood has spoken, the better word, reconciliation, union, oneness of mind, oneness of will. We receive the full identification of you, Jesus, having become our sin. And we invite you, each, each one of us, we invite you to reveal to us how much you've become sin for us yeah. and how we no longer have a part in that but how you have made us your righteousness and how you've given us the mind, your mind, Jesus, the mind of Christ. And we can now do this with great glory, great honor, and great enthusiasm. Yeah. You are so awesome. We love you. We bless you. Invade our bodies right now, yeah. our mortal bodies, and quicken us to new life. Holy Spirit, it's what you do. You're the Lord and giver of life. Come and make this real for us, each one of us in our own way, where we're at. We love you. We invite you. And we do this now remembrance of you. Amen? Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>